and welcome to another episode of How the Hell Did I Get Here with Meg and Rachel. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we have Tom Johnson, who is the president and CEO of Elevate Rapid City. Tom uh, previously was the director of community engagement and economic development at Colorado State University with community and economic development responsibilities for all of Colorado. Uh, he's also managed uh, the Family Leadership Training Institute, which was a unique leadership training program that targeted leaders in underserved communities across Colorado. Johnson has led several initiatives on behalf of the state, including recruiting, business development, and community development. He is a former planning commissioner and small business counselor with the Small Business Development Center. He loves to blaze new trails in economic development recruitment. And as a fun fact, he grew up in rural central Wyoming and is a former college baseball player. He was a pitcher, in case you're wondering. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Hey, Meg, good morning. How are you? I'm oh, good. Good, thank you. I have a quick first question. Isn't all Wyoming rural? Just... No. <laughs> <laughs> Just clearly never been to Laramie. Yeah. It's like a hub of busyness. That's true. That's true. <laughs> True. I could see how you would think that, but there's te technically two cities in Wyoming, Cheyenne and Casper. But yeah, for the most part, it's uh, pretty remote. Yeah, right. And there's, the wind blows. There's a the spectrum. There is a spectrum of rural ruralness. In okay. Wyoming. All right. Okay, just checking for our non Great Plains listeners. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there really aren't that many humans where we are. That's there's no joke about that. Um, well, Tom, we'd love to know what was your uh, how the hell moment where you kind of looked up and looked around and thought, how did I get here? Yeah, there are so many stories I could go and, and use for this moment, but the one that stands out for me was really early in my career when I was in my 20s, I was not in this field. Uh, in fact, I was a um, a screenwriter, uh, and I was working at a coffee shop. <laughs> and so uh, this is what you do when you're a struggling writer. You, you work as a waiter or you serve coffee or you, you do a whole number of things that aren't necessarily related to writing as you're trying to, to break through. And as I kept going in life, I, I knew that uh, at some point I needed to find gainful employment. So, uh, you know, I kept working in the coffee shop for a while and I was trying to make it as a writer. And one day, uh, this guy stopped through the coffee shop. It was the drive. -thru. It was one of these drive-through coffee shops. So, I I took the job so I could go in there and write uh, during slow times. Uh, but this guy kept coming through each day, and he was he was dressed in a in a tie and and a suit coat, and and he tell me, didn't tell me his name, but he'd come through every day, and he would, he was really friendly. And I would make him, at the time, that his drink was an Americano. And so basically that's espresso with extra hot water. It's like taking an espresso and trying to turn it into some version of a lower form of, of maybe coffee or something. And so he'd get an, an Americano each day. And, you know, I, I didn't know at the time that, that he thought I was anything special. But, I, you know, kept coming through each each day and it, each day turned into weeks and you know, he kept asking me a little bit about myself. And one day he said to me, Hey, you know, you're, you seem like you're much too talented to be working in a, at a drive through coffee shop. Um, you're really good with people. And, uh, you know, what, what are you here for? And I said, well, I've got a degree in English lit, uh, with uh, a minor in Latin. <laughs> Actually, I didn't have the minor. I think it was three credits shy from, uh, a minor in Latin, but that's something you say at cocktail parties. You don't tell people you're three credits shy of a minor. You just have a minor in Latin. So <laughs> actually three credits shy of a minor in Latin. Minor in Latin, one of the two. <laughs> uh, and then you, have to, then you have to add the, well, the language too, because they, they think, you know, Latin American studies or something. No, the, the dead language that nobody speaks, so, you know, carpe diem stuff, you know, carpe diem. And they say, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, I get it now. Latin. So at any rate, he stops through and says, you know, you know, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm a, you know, English major. I'm, I'm a, you know, puffed out my chest. I'm a writer. <laughs> well, what have you published? What have you done? Well, nothing. So at that point he said, well, you know, I'm, I, I work at this place, uh, this economic development place. And, you know, we're looking for, you know, kind of a membership director. 
you know, you seem like you're really good with people. Would you be interested in something like that? And I said, well, you know, um, how much does it pay? At the time he said $26,000. And, and I said, you know, okay, let's, I'll take it because I was making less than $26,000 serving coffee. Uh, so I, 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 he said, but there's a, there's a, there's a hitch, you know, you've got a, you've got a no Photoshop too. And uh, I, I never even heard of Photoshop. And, but, but of course I turned to him and said, Oh, I absolutely no Photoshop. I'll, I'll, when do you want me to come in? And he said, well, how about tomorrow morning and we can talk some more and we can give a little test on Photoshop. And I said, well, yeah, okay. that's great. So I immediately went to the only bookstore that we had in town at the time. And I, I got that book on Photoshop and I read it all night so that in the morning I looked like I knew what the hell I was doing on Photoshop. And he said, also, you know, also we, uh, we work on, we work on infrastructure. We work on bringing jobs and, and infrastructure. And I remember I was recently married at the time and I went home and, and turned to my wife and I said, Hey, you know, this guy, he said this word infrastructure, what the, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> and so I had to look up, I had to look up the word infrastructure to even know what it meant. So, you know, I, I, I went there the next day, you know, I, 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 was, I knew I was fluent with a dictionary. So I looked up the word infrastructure and figured out what that meant. Okay, I got that now. And then I, I can read uh, fast. So I got the book on Photoshop. Next day, you know, I crushed that Photoshop test. And I, you know, I used a whole bunch of buzzwords besides uh, infrastructure. I used, you know, ecosystem and stuff like that. So I even got even better with the buzzwords. So I realized, you know, gosh, this is a, uh, Maybe I could do something like this since I, I, I like people. And as it turns out, that profession was all, that's all what that profession was all about. And frankly, life is much like that too, is simply, you know, can you, are you good with people? Can, do you care about people? Do you want to help people? And, you know, the answer certainly in my case, yes. So all those years ago, and this is over 25 years ago, I was a membership development director uh, that didn't know how to use Photoshop. And from that place to where I'm at now, I sometimes think, you know, how the hell did I, how the hell did I end up here? Or how the hell did I get here from, from there? You know, I think that sometimes in life, you know, there's a book that that's out now uh, on serendipity and the role of luck in life. I don't know if, if you think about luck that way, but, but certainly there are moments in your life in which you recognize the serendipity of a moment. And um, you can choose to, to embrace serendipity or, or you can choose to run away from it. And in that case, uh, you know, my financial situation cho chose it for me. But I think I've, in my career, I've, I think I've run towards serendipity and have tried to embrace it. You know, just like coming to Rapid City, uh, I didn't even think about Rapid City 16 months ago. But when I got a call about the job, you know, I embraced, embraced it. And um, I think serendipity, um, you know, it's a little bit like magic. Uh, but if you go back and look, you, you know, you can actually pick these moments where something could happen that seems a little mysterious or magical and you can just pick it. And then, it, you know, later on, post facto, you know, you write the story and you realize that uh, serendipity had a lot to do with it. Yeah, it's interesting, Tom, because as you know, we study people's tolerance for chaos and to use those words, I think what we could maybe make another statement about is how likely are you to embrace those serendipitous opportunities? And so in your case, the way that in, on our assessment, you come out as a fixer, which means that you love helping people, making the world a better place, and you really kind of thrive in a chaotic environment. And so it sounds like that's been how your career sort of developed. So is that, does that sort of resonate with how you've, how you see the world, do you think? Yeah, I, I remember working these jobs in, in college, these, these sort of fast food jobs where you do the same thing every day. And, um, you know, th that was challenging for me. Um, probably the same reason I don't, don't like yard work either. Uh, <laughs> same, <laughs> same thing. And so I, uh, yeah, I, I, I do, you know, I, I love to discover and, and I think uh, I'm always reading a new book. I'm always trying to get something new in my head. I'm, I'm trying to understand the different pers 
perspective, you know, whether it's bad or good, I, I just think, you know, embracing that for me has been something that, you know, it, it's probably in my DNA. Uh, but I would also just recommend it as a matter of course, you know, as a sort of like a vitamin you take every day. You know, there are these moments in, you know, everyday living that you, you know, should I, should I talk to that person? You know, this is pre-COVID, right? So you probably have a mask on now. But should I talk to that person in the grocery store? The answer is probably, yeah, you probably should, uh, even under the mask. So I think, you know, if you can embrace a little bit of this in your life, I think you'll find that uh, serendipity, uh, or as you guys put it, uh, tolerance for chaos, I think that can bring you uh, new perspectives and, and, and rewards that you might not be able to, to recognize until later on. Awesome. Well, uh, Tom, thank you. That's one of the maybe funnier stories, actually, we've heard in a while on our show the, uh, about the, the suit showing up to the barista window. Right, the head, head hunting you out of the coffee yeah, shop and drive through. You have to be able to use Photoshop. <laughs> I think my answer would have been like, yeah, no, I don't think that you don't want me for that job. <laughs> yeah, if there was any kind of process involved, you yeah. would have not thrived. Yeah, right. So. Um, well, Tom, hey, thanks for joining us. It was great to hear your story. Welcome to the community. We're glad that you're here. Yeah. And uh, for those of you listening, we'll uh, catch you on the next round. So stay tuned. Lead powerfully. Change the world. <laughs>